Hello there, I'm SR Coder and welcome back to my next tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use post-processing effects with the standard renderer, how to install them and get them working in your scenes to make them look an awful lot better. What I have here is the um, Cinti Studios Polygon Warpack and uh, I've just put up a scene so that we can have something to look at when we do this. Um, it's a brilliant pack and I highly recommend it. I'll put a link in the description. Um, down in the video here just so you can take a little look at some of this Cinti Studio stuff. It really is pretty awesome. So um, I'm just going to use this so that we've got something to look at when we do our scene. So let's get started with the tutorial. And so far I haven't really done anything fancy with the scene. I've just, just got the uh, demo scene FPX um, in here. Uh, the directional light is just a standard directional light. I've set the mode to real time so I'm not even using baked lighting and I've made sure that the shadow strength uh, is down to about 0 0.5. If you put it up just the shadows look so dark that it doesn't look very realistic so I usually just drop that down to 0 0.5 so that you get subtle shadows rather than those sharp um, dark areas. Uh, the scene has been saved and we're just going to go up to the package manager and just in import the package that we need. So if you just go up to window and package manager this takes a few seconds to load and when it does you'll see inside the unity registry should be the post-processing pack that we're looking for. The post processing pack, if you just go down till you find it, um, there it is here. So this is the post processing pack that you need for the standard uh, core renderer. Um, if you're using universal render pipeline or the high definition render pipeline, then these come built in by default. But I just prefer the core renderer because it's just that much simpler to work with and it's not fancy. Um, straight out of the box, it just works. So just wait for this to install and then I'll show you the next steps. So the first thing you'll want to do is you need to set up um, a layer for your post-processing stuff to go on. So um, if you just go to, um, I've got anything selected on my scene, just go up to this uh, layers where it says default right now. Use the drop down and click on add layer. And I'm just going to create a post-processing layer. Um, I'm just going to call it post-processing to keep that correct. Um, once that's done, um, we'll need to go to the main camera um, for the main camera needs one important item um, for this to work. It's a post-processing layer. So if you search uh, down the list till you get to rendering, you'll see all the post-processing stuff that's come up now. So the, the, this is on the camera. I'll need to place a post-processing layer on the camera. And then there's a little warning here saying no layer has been set up. And that's the reason we just did that. So we'll need to set the layer up to be post-processing so that the camera is on the post-processing layer. Everything else you can leave just by default. The next key step is that we're going to create an empty game object on the scene. I'm going to call this um, post-processing again. And this time it's going to be post-processing volume. Um, this needs one component on it. What we're going to do is go back to this rendering, we're going to add the post-processing volume to the scene. What that does is it allows us to create areas um, within the scene where certain post-processing effects uh, defined by the profile that you uh, create. So you have multiple different profiles and I'll go over that in a second. But you can have uh, different areas where different effects happen. For example, you can add in sort of um, some blurring effect if you wanted to go underwater and you could have a specific area for underwater and you could swap in and out between them with different layers. Because we're going to have this apply across the whole scene, we're just going to create this post-processing volume to be is global and then some of the stuff goes away and we'll just leave this at one. Um, you can leave the priority at zero too, that just um, depends on if you've got two overlapping layers, but we'll leave this because it's a global um, area, we'll just leave that by default. The next thing is um, this profile. We need to set up all of the different post-processing effects that we want to happen within this, so we're going to create ourselves a brand new profile. And one of the kind of confusing things is that with this new profile here, it's called post-processing volume profile. This profile actually does exist in my scene. Um, it's done uh, scene by scene. So um, I have my sample scene um, in my project and what it's done is it's created a sample scenes profile folder and put the post-processing volume profile in there for me. It's the same as seeing it inside of its volume. Um, if you make changes here, it'll also be made change. The changes will also be reflected in this volume profile that we have here. 
but this is just as easy as any to be able to add them. So with this post-processing volume, we can just start adding effects to our scene and we should be able to see them inside of here. So before we add an effect, um, just make sure that uh, the this is the post-processing volume. It also needs to be on the post-processing layer. Um, so we should have the post-processing volume on this post-processing layer as well as uh, the camera should be pointing to the post-processing layer on its post-processing layer uh, component. So once that's all done, everything should work as affected and you will see the, the stuff in here as long as you've got the effects on um, on in the, the viewport. So I'm going to add our first effect. The first effect that I uh, like to add is um, from the Unity. I like to add in Bloom. Um, when you open up these, uh, these when you add these effects, sorry, they do appear in the post-processing profile. However, by default, they're never they're enabled, but the, the values are not enabled um, by default. So you can tweak these as much as you want. Um, I'm going to add just to check that everything's working. Okay, I'm just going to click on this intensity value. I'm just going to click and drag, and what we should see is we should see a sort of a glow effect. You can see it in mine and on the um, the. Uh, the sky at the background here so if i drag it right up it gets a bit ridiculous but uh, if if i've done that then i know that this this effect actually works and that the post everything's been set up correctly and the post processing profile is working so i'm going to set this um this value intensity to one um and i'm just going to go over some of the the other um effects that you can add some of the nice ones that add some extra features so you want the thing about using post processing is um, you can make it ridiculous, but you do want it to be a little bit subtle um, so that it does look uh, it does look good without being overwhelming. I've found that like values of one or two um, will work with the bloom. And uh, if I've got time at the end of the video, I'll also show you how you can add in specifically glowy places um, with specific lights. So I'm just going to go into one of the other effects now. So I'm going to add in another effect. The ambient occlusion one is one of the the better ones. Um, you can bake ambient occlusion lighting into the scene using the light mapper, but this is a screen space ambient occlusion and this works really nicely. Um, screen space ambient occlusion, if I just um, click on the default value, click on intensity and you'll just drag this up a little bit. What you'll see um, is a little subtle uh, change where the areas around corners where there should be a little bit more shadowing, you get a little bit more shadowing and um, you know, if I make it right up, you'll see. So you, you get a lot more depth in your uh, view, in your um, scene, just by adding some values onto this. And again, I'm just going to put a default value of one. So already um, the scene starts to look a little bit nicer as we uh, move around. The uh, corners look a little bit more like their actual corners. And so the scene looks pretty good already just with a couple of effects. So the next effect I'm going to quickly look at is just the depth of field. And uh, this is a camera um based effect so it's not going to work inside of the scene view so what I'm going to do is just uh, put my um, camera down here um, select the camera and do uh, control shift F and what that does it just moves the camera into this position now that I, I had my viewport from and if I click on game view I'm actually going to see it from the camera here so uh, this post processing effect I'll go back to the post processing volume and add from the Unity effects this depth of field one and you'll see almost straight away you get this um, this blur just by the depth of field being enabled. Um, you can change these values like the um, focus distance, aperture and focal length and these all um, these are quite uh, an easy way to just sort of like visually see what's going on with your depth of field but I, I do kind of like that effect it's in a lot of modern video games um, and so yeah this is a, a really nice one. Uh, one of the key things, and I might do a tutorial on it later, is that you, you kind of want it to be a variable depth of field. This focus distance should be at something um, that you're actually looking at. So if you're actually looking at a short distance um, from your camera, you do want this value to be uh, matching that, and that can be changed in script, obviously. Um, so if you are interested in seeing that as a tutorial, then uh, just comment in the comments of the video. Just in the, the last list here, I'm just there are a bunch of other ones. Um, vignette is very commonly used. Um, vignette allows you, and I'll just quickly show you in this one, um, if I just go down here and uh, enable Vignette as the classic mode, 
and uh, leave the color center and intensity i'll just drag this up just a touch so the vignette you'll see a darkening around the outsides um just a sort of circular darkening on the outsides of the of the viewport if i turn it right up you'll see the the real difference you just want to make a, a subtle darkening around these outside vignettes very commonly used because it focuses your look at the center of the the screen and uh, and just darkens a bit that you're not really wanting to be looking at there's a bunch of other effects that you can use and you'll see them in here um the the one that i do want to warn you against is motion blur it sounds like it's a really cool idea but it's actually one of the most costly um costly ones that you have uh, it does require a lot of uh, gpu processing in order for it to um to work and if you turn this value up too much you just get a lot of lag and the worst thing is the motion blur kind of accentuates that lag anyway um a lot of people i've read is uh, one of the first things that they turn off when they have a new uh, new video game is they switch off the motion blur to improve performance so you can put it on if you want to but just be aware uh, and then you can play around with any of these other ones too um all of the all of these have documentation and so if you do want to look at any of them and you want to see what they are you're welcome to um, just look through the unity documentation and you should be able to um, find information about each of them so that you can uh, work out whether you want them or not and feel free to play so hopefully you've enjoyed that tutorial uh, it's a nice short one hopefully and uh, you'll be able to make your scenes a lot more um, a lot more eye-catching just by adding in that post-processing package setting up correctly and adding in some of these post-processing effects to your scenes thanks and goodbye